It's been more than 50 years since we stepped foot on the moon. Since then, man hasn't physically traveled to a nearby astrological body. Mars, our nearest planet, is just 300 million miles away, and our current technology allows us to get there in six months, give or take. But the time needed to travel to Mars is probably the least concerning issue. Today, SpaceX is getting closer and closer to making this a reality. And much of this hinges on the capability and reliability of the SpaceX Starship that could take us there. So how exactly could SpaceX get to Mars? Well, the main selling point of the SpaceX Starship is its super powerful engine, making it just right for the huge task of getting to Mars. Now, getting into space is just one thing, landing on Mars is a whole other story. This part of the trip is really tricky and needs a lot of careful planning and doing, more than you might think. First off, we need to understand what it takes to get to Mars. Space travel is about continuing moving. Everything in our solar system, including Earth, moves around the Sun. Earth stays in its orbit around the Sun, moving in a huge orbit at about 30 kilometers per second. This keeps us going around the Sun, which we do every 365 days. Now, Mars is farther from the Sun than Earth, so it's not pulled as strong by the Sun's gravity. That means it moves slower, about 24 kilometers per second. If we want to leave Earth in a spaceship to visit other planets, we're just another thing moving around the Sun. If we slow down, we'll move closer to the Sun, heading towards planets like Venus. If we speed up, we'll move away from the Sun, towards planets like Mars. So getting around in space is all about changing your speed compared to where you started. This is called Delta V, where delta means change and V means velocity, usually measured in kilometers per second. For example, if Earth is moving at 30 kilometers per second and your spaceship speeds up at 31 kilometers per second, your delta V is one. Slowing down to 29 kilometers per second also gives you a delta V of minus one. But just speeding up from Earth at one kilometers per second won't get you across the solar system because of gravity and the air dragging you back. To beat these forces and reach low Earth orbit, you need about 9.4 kilometers per second of delta V. That's why Starship needs a really powerful super heavy booster for takeoff. Plus, the Starship needs to refuel in Earth's orbit before heading to Mars, as it needs a lot more delta V to get there. Of course, Changing speed relies heavily on fuel. Refueling in orbit is like resetting our starting point, needing an extra 9.5 kilometers per second of delta V to reach Mars, about the same as getting out of Earth's atmosphere. And this next part of the mission is very different from leaving Earth. To leave Earth, we needed to speed up, but to land on Mars, we need to slow down a lot, which is just as hard. A fully fueled starship in low Earth orbit has about six to seven kilometers per second of delta V, which is a bit less than the needed 9.5 kilometers per second to get to Mars. Luckily, the same things that made it hard to leave Earth, gravity and air resistance, will help us land on Mars, making our delta V even better. Here's what will happen. The starship orbiting Earth is held there by Earth's gravity kept in place by its speed. If the Starship slows down, it'll start falling back to Earth. By using the same idea, think about this. If we speed up instead, we'll go higher and higher into space. This is tough because Earth's gravity is strong. We need a big delta V to get past it. For example, we need to speed up by 2.44 kilometers per second just to reach where the satellites that stay over one spot on Earth are. And we need another 0.68 kilometers per second to get as high as the moon. Right on the edge of Earth's gravity, we find out something interesting about gravity. It reaches far, but gets weaker the further you go from Earth. With just a little more push, 0.9 kilometers per second, 
we can break free from Earth. Now imagine that we're somewhere beyond the moon at this point, when a tiny speed increase of 0.39 meters per second sets us on our way to Mars. This part uses another 3.6 kilometers per second of our delta V, using more than half of what our ship can do. Unfortunately, this massive use of fuel creates a problem. We don't have enough fuel to land on Mars just using engines. It gets even thicker when we think about the speeds. Leaving Earth's atmosphere and gravity puts us moving around the sun faster than Earth's own 30 kilometers per second. Mars moves slower at 24 kilometers per second. So we're racing towards Mars too fast and we could overshoot into the asteroid belt unless we slow down. After months of gliding through space, we do our first slow down burn. We turn the Starship around, fire up the engines and reduce our speed by 0.67 kilometers per second to get caught by Mars's gravity. But that's just the start of a tough part. If we cut our speed by another 0.34 kilometers per second, we'll be in line with Mars's outer moon, Deimos. Slow down by another 0.4 kilometers per second, and we're closer to the inner moon, Phobos. But slowing down this much already uses over 5 kilometers per second of our delta V, leaving us with just 1 to 2 kilometers per second left. To land safely on Mars, we need another 4.5 kilometers per second of delta V. This is possible, but needs a lot of careful planning and more efficient use of fuel. To save fuel for our big landing on Mars, we need to use outside forces to help us slow down our ship to a speed we can handle. Trying to get into a circular orbit around Mars would use up most of our leftover fuel, which isn't what we want. A smarter move is to go on an elliptical orbit, which is like an oval shape. It gets really close to Mars at one point, perigee, and then goes further out into space at the other, apogee. This lets us use Mars's gravity and some air resistance to help us slow down. Now, Mars's air is pretty thin, but it's still useful. We can dip the ship into the top part of Mars's atmosphere just right so that we can use some of its air drag to lose a bit of speed before getting flung back into Apogee. Doing this over and over, Mars's gravity keeps pulling us back, each time shaving off a little more speed. This gets us closer to the slow speed we need for a smooth landing on Mars. But we can't keep doing these dips forever. Eventually, we'll have to make the full plunge through Mars's atmosphere. Landing on Mars is tricky because Mars is smaller than Earth. This means we need to come in at a sharper angle, so we don't just bounce off into space again. We really want to save our engines for the very end, so we need another way to push us down. That's why SpaceX's first plan for a space travel system in 2016 had a part of the ship that could help us with this. The Starship is smaller and doesn't need as much help, but the idea is still the same. When it's time to land, the Starship will do a special flip, coming into the atmosphere upside down. This way, with the belly and tail up and the nose down, the shape of the ship helps us push it down towards Mars. As the Starship gets its angle just right, it'll start to lose a lot of speed because of the air pushing against it. Then it flips into the belly flop position we've seen on Earth. This position is all about creating a lot of air resistance to slow the ship down even more. But there's a limit of how much air resistance can help, and that's called terminal velocity. It's like if you were falling forever. Eventually, you'd stop speeding up because the air resistance and your weight balances out. On Earth, parachutes help us slow down more, but the Starship doesn't have parachutes. So there's a point where air resistance has done all it can and the ship stops getting slower. Because Mars's air is thinner, this happens at a speed of about five times faster than of Earth. So we'll need more engine power to land on Mars than we would on Earth. Fuel is super important for landing the Starship on Mars just right. When it's time, the engines will fire up one last time, with the tail pointing towards Mars. The fuel in the rocket's special tanks is crucial here giving us just enough push to line the ship for a gentle landing. 
This needs to be perfect. There's no room for mistakes. Landing successfully is like getting 100% on a really hard test. Getting how complex this all is, it's clear why landing a big ship like the Starship on Mars is a huge challenge. For NASA, landing smaller, lighter things on Mars is easier because the fuel goes further for the lighter stuff. But there's a limit of how much fuel you can bring to Mars. SpaceX needs a big ship for Elon Musk's dream of a big city on Mars, but a bigger ship is harder to land. SpaceX is always trying to improve the Starship. They're planning a bigger Starship V2 with bigger fuel tanks and trying to make it lighter. They're also thinking about adding more Raptor vacuum engines. The new Raptor engine that they're working on should be more efficient, giving us more push for the same amount of fuel. They're also looking at long-term ideas, like using Mars' moon Deimos. Getting to Deimos needs less fuel than getting to Mars. Imagine a fuel stop or a base there. This would give the Starship enough fuel for the hardest part of the trip, making landing on Mars safer and easier. Of course, landing a fully loaded Starship on Mars is a huge task. SpaceX can't be sure it'll work until they try it. Past launches of the Starship blowing up mid-air show how tough this can be. Learning to land on Mars will probably start with some failures before they get it right. It'll take a lot of hard work and not giving up. And then, the biggest test will be doing this with people on board. Do you see SpaceX enabling humans to travel to Mars in the next decade? Don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments below. For similar content, check out the videos on your screen right now.